Good afternoon. My name is Laura Newman, and I'm a senior advisor for the Carter Center. I've been working for more than 20 years in the promotion of the right to information. First, please let me thank UNESCO for the invitation to speak on this distinguished panel. I'm sorry not to be with you in Uzbekistan to celebrate the International Day of Universal Access to Information, and more importantly, to learn and grow from your experiences in advancing the right of access to information. But I do appreciate this opportunity to speak about the role of e-governance in promoting inclusive access to information. As you well know, e-governance is a reform that's meant to provide better access to information, better access to services, to make the public administration more efficient and accountable, and to expand the reach of government as people use their personal devices, such as computers and smartphones, to be in contact with their local elected officials and public servants. E-governance is meant to save time, to reduce effort uh, and save money, and to assure ultimately a greater uh, assure ultimately greater equity and consistency. But is this always the case? While we increasingly have relied on computerization, websites, and smartphones, I think it's important to really question whether e-governance in fact does promote inclusive access to information, and if so, to what extent. I'd like to tell you a story that I just heard this morning from one of my colleagues. She had gone to the Department of Motor Vehicles, uh, we call it the DMV, with her daughter to get her first driver's license. While she was there, she noticed an older woman who was really struggling. This woman was at the DMV to get a replacement license as her driver's license had been stolen in a violent crime. Now in the DMV, before you speak to an official that works there, you must read and complete a form. This is true for a lot of the public offices in, in the US. This form provides all of the information that you need in order in this case to get your driver's license, and it has spaces for you to insert information that the DMV needs. The form is on a computer. For this older woman, this proved an obstacle that she could not overcome. She did not know how to use the computer, and she only had a functional literacy, which was not sufficient for her to complete the form. For this older woman, e-governance reforms left her without the necessary information or services. For her, it was anything but inclusive. About 10 years ago, the Carter Center had identified that for many women, the fundamental right to information was more an aspiration than a reality. For women and many marginalized persons, there are significant obstacles in exercising the right to information. In studies that we had undertaken and some programming, as well as a recent survey of information commissioners, we've identified a series of challenges. These include things like literacy, uh, as two thirds of the world's illiterate are women, uh, and women often don't speak the official language. There's a lack of awareness of the right to information or how and where to ask for it. Uh, oftentimes, women don't have enough time to go to the public office uh, as they are confronted with the double burden of income generation as well as caring for the household. Uh, women have mobility issues, especially in places where it's unsafe for women, uh, where it's dangerous for women to be in, in public transportation. There continue to be both cultural norms that inhibit women from asking, and the flip side, the continuing culture of secrecy on the part of the government. Public officials, community members, or family may not be supportive. Women lack access to the internet. And overall, there is still a fear that women face in trying to exercise this right. Notably, e-governance can both support and hinder inclusive access to information. With more information and services available through websites and smartphones, obstacles that we just mentioned, such as the lack of time and mobility, the attitude of public servants or family members, cultural norms and fear, all of those may be reduced. However, there remain a number of notable challenges that do continue and are actually exacerbated by e-governance, particularly issues around literacy uh, or the issue around women who don't speak the official language and the continuing and in some places growing digital divide. In many places, the gender gap in access to the internet is striking. For example, according to 2020 statistics, men are 21% more likely to be online than women. And in the least developed countries, this increases to 52%. For smartphones, women's uptake of mobile internet had been increasing, still not universal. 
across low and in middle income countries, around 60% of women use mobile internet. But with the onset of COVID, there's evidence that the economic impacts of the cost of smartphones has meant that fewer women are able to access and use these devices, thus reducing the number of women who actually do have access to mobile internet. These findings can serve as a guide for our e-governance uh, and to end access to information policy. Certainly, we should continue with e-governance reforms. However, these must be accompanied by complementary means for women and marginalized persons to access public information. Things like hotlines or information advocates and liaisons that bring information into the communities and speak the local languages. Public officials that are identified to assist persons with problems navigating the online systems and information fairs where women gather. Uh, in other words, we can't rely just on e-governance to make sure that information reaches uh, women and marginalized populations. And we should try to better understand where e-governance works best and how to where and how uh, these reforms may be failing. For, for this to happen, we must have better data and it must be disaggregated by gender. Finally, we should always be looking to develop policies that are, that are at a minimum gender sensitive and even better, they should be gender transformative. As we celebrate this International Day of Universal Access to Information, we're reminded that unless we are incredibly intentional about assuring that all persons have the same ability to exercise this right, its universality will remain elusive. Working together, we can change this. Thank you again for this opportunity, and I wish you all the very best uh, in the remaining part of your proceedings. Thank you.